deploying a utility that you built should be quick and easy, but sometimes people overcomplicate it. In this video, I'm going to show you how I deploy my simple image viewer app to my machines, how I add it to the right click menu and how I keep it simple. Now, for most of my training, I work in an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you need a quick answer to the question, how do I do this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So by now you should know that this is my simple image viewer that you're looking at right now. In fact, let's hit the escape key, uh, which will shrink it down. And there we go. So you can see that in fact, yes, this is just the simple image viewer that I'm using right now. I hit escape again, it goes away. Now here's my source code we built in the last video for this. If you uh, didn't catch that, there's a, uh, a previous video on this channel talking about how to build a utility for viewing images. That's what we built here. What I'm going to do is show you how I publish it and how I then utilize it with our, my right click menu. So first off publishing, right click in your project and say publish. And we're going to choose folder. There's lots of different ways. Click once. No, don't do that. Azure. No. Docker container registry. No, we're going to do a folder. And I say, well, you're sure you don't want click ones? No, I don't. I want just a folder. So leave that alone and hit finish, but we're not done yet. So don't run this. So we want to go to all settings and there's a few things I want to, or a couple things I want to look at here. First of all, framework dependent versus self-contained. So this is, this is probably not what you're thinking at first. So there's two different ways of self-containing. Um, one is to say, hey, I want to uh, be self-contained, which means that I'm going to include everything I need to in this package. Or you can say, no, my framework dependent, meaning the SDK has to be installed on this machine. We're going to do the, in the SDK has to be installed on this machine because it's going to be operating on machines that I'm using and the SDK will be installed on my machine. If you choose self-contained, well, it's going to contain all of .NET, which is going to take the file size from around 200 kilobytes to somewhere around 140 megabytes, which isn't a huge deal when it comes to, we have tons of hard drive space, but at the same time, uh, it's not something I need to do. Now, target runtime, I target Win64. And yes, you can target other things you want. Although just so you know, I can't target anything that's not Windows because the fact that I'm using WPF. So I can only really target Windows platforms. And let's talk about that for a minute. Um, I did have some pushback or questions about well, why did I do this in Maui? We'd great to do this in Maui or Maui hybrid. Let's use Maui for this. That's an over complexity to this application that I don't need. I don't need to be cross-platform. I don't need to work on Mac or Linux. I'm working on Windows. So it's important to understand your audience. It's important to understand what are you trying to do and don't over-architect something. The other thing is, if I were to do, let's say Maui, and I just deployed to Windows, well, that's kind of a, a lot of overhead for just doing what I would, I'm doing here. But let's say I said, oh, no, no, I got to deploy to Mac and well, I can't deploy to Linux because Linux won't work with Maui. So now I have to think about something else to do instead. But even there, if I deploy to Mac, well, when Mac comes out with a new operating system version or thing like that, I have to go back in and change this. I haven't changed this source code in, I believe it's been seven years, but not positive. Um, I have upgraded now to .NET 10, but, and I had to redeploy it when I deployed a couple of years ago to a new, a new machine. I lost the EXE. So I rebuilt it and I think I changed it at that time at .NET 8. But, you know, the original code was written in .NET framework. So this has been a long time coming. I haven't touched it. That's the important thing about creating a utility that saves me time. Because if I'm constantly working with it, it's not saving me time. And this isn't a huge time saver. This saves me about two minutes of video. Well, that it's about three months of before I get to the return on investment when I spent an hour on this originally. So after about three months, it started to kind of pay for itself. But if I am maintaining it every year, then it might actually take more time than it saves. So be careful that too often get into the idea of, well, if it's not the latest and greatest thing, or if it's not, you know, if you're not always getting the, you know, this cool stuff into it, then it's not good enough. No, that's a not a great way of thinking about how to build an application. An application is designed to serve you. Okay, so off the soapbox, 
let's talk about file publishing. We're going to do a single file. So produce single file. Now, if you change from framework dependent to self-contained, this is kind of weird. Self-contained with produce a single file will not produce a single file. It produces multiple files because there's some additional files it needs. I'm not exactly sure why. I really do wish it was all in, inside the EXE, even self-contained, but it's not. So just note that um, this won't be a single file if you choose single file and framework dependent. Make sure you choose 64-bit Windows unless you're somehow not ran, maybe if you're on ARM um, or ARM64. So we hit save, we hit publish. So now it's going to publish my application. We click here and it opens up the window and we have two files. You might say, well, I thought you said single file. Well, yes, we did. And at some point I created a video on this, but PDB files, they are files that help you debug an application when it's in production. So when it's in production, it uses the release mode. And one of the things it does with release mode is it changes how the code gets written and um, it kind of strips out your names for things and puts um, easier names for the compiler to run, um, smaller names, more compact, et cetera. Um, but that's hard to debug. So this PDB allows you to map back to your code all the, um, the, the actions that are executed in this executable. So you can take your Visual Studio, say, here's the PDB file, for this executable, I want to debug this executable as it's running in production. You can put breakpoints in all the rest. So super helpful. I would encourage you not to just delete these um, for a production application. I don't need it though. All I need is this, so I can technically delete this. Again, for production applications, don't delete them, store them somewhere safe. Uh, not, they don't go to the customer, but you keep a, a, hang, a, a handle on them. But I don't need it. It's not necessary for operation. So this executable, there we go. We can load the directory. We can load things up. It still works just fine. Okay. So our application has now been deployed. I can take this executable and put it somewhere. In fact, I have put it somewhere. I have an apps folder in there is my um, original. Notice this one I believe is from 2024. Again, this is when this new computer was um, created. I, I've gone through probably four or five computers since this was built. So it keeps moving along with me. Um, but here is my simple image viewer. If you double click on it, it, it's the same thing. Okay. So this is where I put it in the C apps, simple image viewer folder. But then I put entries into my registry. Now I will put a big asterisk here. If you do not know what you're doing, do not do this. Don't mess with your registry. Your registry is a dangerous place to mess with. You can cause serious problems with your computer. But if you know what you're doing, there's two places in the, the shell and the shell here. So for background shell and then the regular shell for directory, um, I will show you what those are. But basically you you put a simple image viewer folder and the command, you put the command to the correct path for your machine. And then a percentage sign V here, uh, or percentage sign one, um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring in that, um, that directory as an argument for your application. So that's where the args comes in. So um, let's open up this registry file. Here it is, here is the create the folder. Here is the create the, the command, the key itself. Um, same thing, folder and key for both right click on white space as well as right click on a folder. So yes, there's, um, it's a bit of complexity to mess with the registry. I'll give you this registry. You can click on the link down in the description. I'm going to name it .txt, not .reg. And the reason why is because if you double click on a reg file, it's going to give you a UAC prompt and then it's going to say, hey, we're going to add information to the registry. Are you sure this can cause problems? If you don't trust the source and don't do this, this may even get flagged by your antivirus software. You need to be careful that you know what you're doing. But if you know what you're doing and you say yes, then it's going to modify the registry with those entries. So I'm not going to give you a file that does it automatically. 
I'm going to make you do it yourself. So just rename the text file .reg and run it if you are confident in the values. But first you have to open it up and you have to change this path to be the path to your exe. Same with this path down here, your exe. And if you name it something different or you don't want to call it simple image viewer, you have to change this everywhere that's mentioned as well. Again, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. But this is how you add it to the right click menu. So that's it. You publish your exe and then you add to your right click menu. Now you're done. You might need a reboot, uh, but now you're done. You have a simple image viewer running in your right click menu. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.